It's the 1987 Akron Open. Brought to you by the Amateur Bowlers Association Tour, the ABA Tour for the Amateur Player, and by Bell Air Lane's Five Aces Classic, Northeast Ohio's number one summer tournament, and by Colonial Village Lane's The Friendly Place to Bowl. Hello everyone, I'm Jim Mitchell, and I'll be doing your play-by-play -play for this, the eighth renewal of this most prestigious classic. Tonight we're going to have the finals, the five best players from a field of 96 of the best players in Northeast Ohio. And to do our color is a veteran of over 20 years of bowling experience. He's a two-time Stark County Masters champion and a former state singles champion. Let's hear it for Dickie Barger. Dick. Well, thank you very much, Jim, and boy, it is a pleasure to be here this evening uh, at Colonial Village Lanes. We've got a fine crowd and a fine turnout this evening, and Jim, we had 96 players start yesterday at 1 o'clock, and now we're down to the elusive five here, and it looks like an exciting evening for us. We've had a 300 game already this weekend, and uh, we're looking for some real high scoring tonight, so let's take this time and meet the top five players. Okay, bowling fans, our fifth place qualifier, Marty Rigby, and uh, Marty, you bowled nice and steady the whole tournament uh, and been bowling good in the area. Uh, how do you feel like your chances are going through a field like you've got to go through here? You know, in a one-game match, anything can happen. Well, look for Marty Rigby to be a threat today. Seated in the fourth position, Butch Steller. Butch, you're the only left-hander in the finals. Do you think that will be an advantage or a disadvantage? I have to think that'll be a good advantage because I'll be able to create my own shot and uh, keep it there the whole afternoon. Or you Look for this young left-hander. Dickie, back to you. Our bowling fans are a third place qualifier, Todd Ag, and uh, a former champion, and you finished second here last year. Todd, uh, it's a tough field, though. Uh, how do you feel your chances are? I feel pretty good. I'm going to try to make some good shots and hopefully get some breaks. See what He's a young lion, bowling fans. Back to you, Jim. Seated in the number two position, Jimmy Grand. Jimmy, it's your first time in the finals of the Akron Open. You average 234 for the tournament. What do you think your chances are? Pretty good. I feel good. I just hope I strike. There he is, one of the better players in the Akron area. Dickie, back to you. Hey, bowling fans, and we have our leader, a gentleman that qualified first, and uh, Ted Malecki, you got to be feeling pretty good. Uh, did you do anything different to prepare for this tournament here at the Akron Open? Uh, yes, I did, Dickie. I bowled here before, so I have an idea of what the conditions are like, so I drilled up a new ball, especially for this house. Well, he bowled great all day today, so look for this guy, the leader, who has to bowl one game for the title of the Akron Open. Well, you've met all the five finals here in this year's Akron Open. With me now is the tournament director, Rick Davis. Rick, you put on a fine tournament. Thanks very much, Jim. Uh, I've tried to work very hard at it and just make it a premier event so everybody enjoys bowling in it. The big question, who is your pick for the finals today? Who's your pick to win this tournament? Well, they all bowled so well all day. In fact, all weekend, uh, I, just, I can't really make a pick, but I'll say that there's going to be a lot of excitement and a lot of good scores. Okay, you've met the five finals, and we're ready for match number one. The way we're using our format here tonight, Dickie, is uh, the same way we used it on the Pro Bowlers Tour on Saturday afternoon. Marty started the tournament on the left lane. He will finish last on lane 22. I don't know if that's going to be pressure or not. I don't think I'd like to be in a situation where I would have to strike to win a tournament. A little better shot that time, Dick. Oh, ring and ten. Well, you're right, uh, Jim. He uh, definitely had definitely had more lift on the ball, and as you see, uh, a little more follow through too. So, the ring and ten, uh, the ball sometimes uh, will get in the oil a little bit too soon, and the ball just doesn't finish, and the six goes around the ten. Dickie, we know that the outside seemed to be hooking quite a bit here at Colonial Village. You think he might have a problem with this ten pin? Well, Marty throws the ball pretty straight on his spares, and uh, I don't think he'll have any trouble. Oop, he pulled it. Yeah, that's what we were talking about uh, with the dry outside lanes you know you got to get a lot of room you got to get the extreme left side of that lane you know what i would suggest is to throw it a little harder maybe or maybe go to a, a, a harder shell ball jim uh something that doesn't grab the lane quite as uh quite as soon put stellar up on lane 22 working on two in a row going for number three takes his time on the approach good delivery that time dick Ooh. He cut that swing off a little bit. Uh, Jim uh, uh, just did not get there in a good position, and uh, 
his arm swing came through straight through instead of he swings the arm swing comes out a little bit with uh, Butch after the at the bottom of the swing and uh, that one there he didn't finish quite as well and uh, consequently the ball broke a little early. You know, interesting note on Butch Steller, he never had a game under 200. The lowest game of, of the tournament was 203. Good cover. That gives Butch Steller a double open in the third frame, 47 in the third. What a great rush Butch Seller made this afternoon with back-to-back -to -back 279s. He's going to be tough to beat tonight. You know, Dick, I think he was in the 11th position going into the last three games of the tournament and shoots those two back-to-back -to -back 279s and moves up into the fourth position. He's capable of throwing a lot of strikes. He got through that one. Oh, it's high again. He might... Oh, he's got the break there, pin rolling across like that. That Once seems again. to be, be taking a little bit of time, Dick. You know, normally uh, Butch is, a, is the kind of player who likes to, to get up there and go. You know, he doesn't like to sit there too long. Well, there's a lot of pressure out here for the players as Butch Zedler shoots the 10 pin. Cross alley for the 10. No problem. Good cover. You know, Dickie, we have a big crowd out here tonight at Colonial Village Lanes, an estimated probably four to 500 people. I'm sure that most of these players being in the first time in the finals of the Akronobe has got to make them a little nervous. Well, you can, say, you can just sense the pressure here. I mean, it's just, uh, it's unbelievable. Marty Rigby. Oh, boy, Jim, he just sawed the five and a half on that pitch, but the 10 pin just did not go out. Marty seems to be a little hesitant on his follow through. His best part of his game is when he just flat out rips it. Dick also looks to me like he's just a little too far left. He seems to be in the oil too long. Shooting cross alley at the 10 pin. He missed it on lane 21 earlier. Marty's a great player. He has quite a few tournament titles to his credit. He's uh, an NBA national champion. Of course, he made the finals of the Stark County doubles. He finished fourth. He also uh, led the Grand Lanes doubles tournament. Marty's a great player. He, again, he shoots a lot of big games. Well, at 32 years old, he's, uh, he's have, he has a lot of accomplishments already, and he'd sure like to add this Akron Open to his titles. Marty seems to be taking his time. Let's see if he made the adjustment on lane 21 to kick out the 10. A little better shot, Dick. That time he got it out. Now what do you think he did on that, Dickie, to get the 10 pin out? I think you're absolutely right, Jim. I think he did make a, a board move to the right. Uh, he was getting the ball in the oil a little too sooner, and as we saw the characteristics of the week, of the weekend on here at Colonial Lanes, the players have played way out around the five board and out, seven board and out, were the most successful to carry the pins. But Steller is up by 20 pins, working on a spare, bowling in the fifth frame. Wow, Dickie, what happened on that one? Wow, there's no, there's no explanation for that. Uh, the bowling guys were not with him on that pitch, and that, that happened to a lot of players uh, this weekend. Uh, the solid nine. Uh, there's just the ball broke real sharply and shot the five straight through, and the ball did not hit the nine. It's just a just a tremendously powerful strike ball. Basically, to pick up the spare, he just has to throw the uh, strike ball, wouldn't he, Dick? That's exactly right, Jim, and he does that. Which Steller coming up on the left lane, number 21, here at Colonial Village Lane. Lanes 29 and 30. We have our practice pair where the other three finals will be warming up. So if you hear pins falling in the background, that's the practice pair 29 and 30 here at beautiful Colonial Village Lane. That's a good pitch. Looks good. Yeah, uh, you'll notice, Jim, he got that ball to the left a little bit more. The ball went down the lane longer, and then the sharp finish on the end, as opposed to the pitch before where he did not get the ball to the left enough, and it broke soon on him that time. He got it down the lane. A great shot for Butch. Marty Rigby up on lane 21, left a week 10 on this pair last time on this lane. Let's see if he made the adjustments. Again, a week 10, Dick. Boy, and he had the scout coming around, too. You know, Marty, uh, with this freshly oiled lane surface like we're bowling on, uh, 
uh, doesn't have the advantage. Butch does because Butch revs the ball up a little bit more. And uh, lanes are slick right now. Uh, they've just applied oil to them. And uh, so Marty's not getting into the early roll. And uh, consequently, he's not getting that 10 out. Marty shooting cross alley for 10-10, his third one of the game. Dickie, you know, uh, again, uh, they freshly oiled the lanes here for the finals. Now, I noticed that Marty's using the same ball in the championship match that he used during the qualifying round. Do you think that's an advantage or a disadvantage, and or should he have changed balls? What do you think he should do? Well, I'll tell you, Jim. Uh, the players are used what they, what got him here, and uh, he bowled good with that ball all weekend. I'm sure it feels good in his hand, and that's the toy he wants with him now. That's the ball he wants to use under the gun. On the left lane, number 21, a little bit more to the right. Yeah. That may be the key, uh, Dickie. At that time, he, he actually made a mistake. He stuck a little bit to the line and pushed the ball out to the right, but he hit the dry area of the lane and made the big turn. Now, maybe he should do that same thing on lane 22. Well, like I noted before, Jim, uh, getting the ball to the right for the right-handers and to the left for the left-handers is what brought the ball back to the pocket with power. With Stellar working on the seventh frame, he's got a strike up in the sixth frame. He can take a 30-pin lead with this strike right here. He threw it great. He threw it great, Jim. Butch Settler's in control at this point, going into the eighth frame. Right now, Butch is going off at a 2.16 pace. He's just got this match well in control. The best Marty Reby can do, if he strikes out from here on out, is 2.27. But Butch looks like he's lined up. He's got the butterflies out of his system. For 22 years old, from Norton, Ohio, he looks like an experienced player. Got wide that time. That's the play, the key to Butch Stellar's game. He's got such a wide pocket. He made a little bit of mistake to the left. The ball made the big turn into the pocket and got the kick off the wall. Right now, Marty Rigby seems to be in a must-strike situation, Dick. It's, we've got three more frames to go in the match, but it looks like he's in a must-strike situation. Once again, there you see Marty Rigby that time got the ball to the right sooner. He got the ball out into the five and six board area and got more traction and a better carry. You know, Marty really hasn't made a bad pitch at this game, Dick. He just left a couple week tens. Again, uh, you know, you don't get a lot of practice on the TV pair. I'm sure he's still a little nervous. But again, he's in that strike much situation. The ninth frame working on a double. He's going to have to have 10 right here. He swung it good. He got that out again, Dick. Well, I think it's uh, pretty obvious that uh, Marty didn't get to the right soon enough. He's now adjusted on the lanes. And, you know, when you're bowling one match that quickly under this kind of pressure, it's the guy that gets started soon. And Butch Zedler is the one that got started soon. And he's coming up in the ninth frame. Marty Rigby can wire off for 227. Butch Zedler right now is going off at a 226 pace. Strike here, just about locks it up. Dickie, I don't know, Butch looks awful relaxed out there. Again, he's been in this situation many, many times, and he's very confident. Right now, he's on the top of his game. He's throwing the ball super right now, and uh, even with an open, if, uh, if an open, it gives the a chance for Marty to strike out and win the game, but uh, all he needs is a mark. Well, Marty's got to feel good, uh, excuse me, Butch has got to feel good about being the only left-hander in the finals, and there'll be no one tampering with his condition over there. That's the ball game. Good Steller putting uh, a five bagger in here right now. He's got 106 in the fifth and a five bagger. Right now he's gone off at a 240 pace. The best Marty Reby can do as 227. So Butch Steller will be our champion here in the first game. Uh, he's just going to finish out now. Uh, we got another match coming up here with the Todd Agee Dickey coming in. He's getting ready to go. Do you think Todd's going to have to uh, come out early on this? Or do you think it, he's going to use any strategy whatsoever on Butch? You know, he's got the advantage of uh, going first or last or finishing on the right or left lane. If you were Todd Agee coming into the situation, what would you do to try to knock Butch Steller off his pace? Well, he's got to start out real strong. And Todd, of course, has won here before. He bowled great here last year, shooting 299 on this pair. Uh, Todd's a, a youth with a lot of proud of himself. He knows what he's doing out there. He's got a lot of confidence in his game, and he's a young player. 
a veteran already at such a young age. So I, I look for Todd Agee to be aggressive and to be hitting the pocket right out of the box. Butch Deller finishes the game with 245. Not a bad game to get out of the box with. Marty Rigby will be finishing out the 10th frame. Again, Marty is labeling every shot right now. He has, really hasn't thrown a bad pitch. Left a couple weak tens. He missed that uh, 10 pin back there in the third frame. The strike out here for 227. Marty's got quite a few titles to his uh, credit. He's a Indy singles title. He's a CTBA doubles champion and a six-time All-Star player. And look at those 300 games, Jim, 11 of them. So he's got, he's got nothing to be ashamed of for the performance that he put on this weekend here at Colonial Lanes. Okay, Marty, putting on a good show right now. Again, Marty Rigby's bad. He also has five 800s to his, his credit. And one thing that we have alluded so far is in the Budweiser League of Masters, Marty Rigby currently is the leader in the ad average category with a blistering 222 average. Incredible, Jim. I'll tell you, know, we're bowling in all them different houses on all those different conditions and uh, he has just set a torrid pace in the Budweiser League and uh, one reason why he rolled so consistent here this weekend he just stays in that pocket he's a steady player and a nice round of applause for Marty Rigby. Marty Rigby finishes out with 225 to Butch Stellar's 245. Next match Butch Stellar against Todd Agee. Dickie, we want to talk a little bit about some of our great sponsors. You know, the Five Aces Classic, it's probably the most prestigious, longest-running summer tournament in Northeast Ohio. Uh, last year, we paid out $5,000 to the champion, and ironically, the defending champion is Todd Agee. Well, I tell you, that's just a pretty good sign of the kind of bowler Todd is. He's just bowled good around this area, uh, real solid here for the last three, four years. And, you know, if you, you look at this uh, money that the uh, 17th annual uh, Five Aces Tournament has paid out over the years, over $17,000 have been paid out in one of the nicest summer tournaments that uh, uh, you'll see in the, uh, in the state of Ohio. The Five Aces Classic Tournament starts April 24th and runs through Labor Day. That runs on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. It's the 18th annual Five Aces Classic at Bel Air Lanes. The cost is $23 per entry. One in 10 will cash. Last year, they paid out over $17,000 in prize money, and they paid out over $300,000 in the last 17 years. So it's a great tournament, and anybody who would like to bowl in the Five Aces Classic, I would suggest giving all of our friends a call at Bel Air Lanes. If Donnie Ball, tournament director, does a fine job at the Five Aces Classic. The number out there at uh, Bel Air Lanes bowling fans is 644-2316. So give them a call. As Todd A.G. warms up here. A few more practice shots here for Todd, and uh, we're going to kick off. Uh, Dickie, again, I want to talk a little bit about this Five Aces Classic out there. Uh, you know, they have a new thing this year. It's $100 for current tournament leader, high handicap series at the conclusion of each week. So it's just another way that you can pick up some money in the Five Aces Classic. Also out at Bel Air Lanes, they have a no-tap tournament. And what that is, Dickie, is a nine-pin no-tap. Actually, it's a mixed nine-pin no-tap you got a woman and a guy. If you get nine pins, you mark it down as a strike. So just a, a little added spice to the tournaments out of Bel Air Lanes. Again, it kicks off on April the 24th and runs through Labor Day. A great tournament for everyone to participate in. Keep your game sharp throughout the summer. Go out and practice at any of your local proprietor establishments and bowl the Five Aces Classic at Bel Air Lanes. Hey, we're getting ready for match two. Butch Settler, 245 that first game. He finished, of course, this afternoon with back-to-back -back 279s. He starts out tonight with 245. Uh, put the pencil to that. Uh, he's averaging a toward 260. Butch Stellar is a little more relaxed now, coming up on lane 21, starting the second match in the 1987 Akron Open. What happened, Dickie? Well, he laid it down a little quick there. Uh, he got that ball down quick, and as you saw, the ball overreacted. He's using a urethane bowling ball, and these bowling balls react very, very quick to the lane surface, and that ball just started like it started in his backswing, Jim. Dickie, we got the two, four, seven, ten. How's he going to have to... He's got to move right. He's going to bank the two into the ten. 
he's going to give it a shot. Great he's shot, Dickie. What a fantastic shot. He did exactly what he's supposed to do. He played it wide, didn't have the big hook. Took the two, four, seven out with the ball and slid the two into the ten. What a way to start it out. That puts the pressure on Todd right off the bat. Butch has yet to shoot a game under 200, and that's why, bowling fans, you know, you, you, you like to see the strikes, but the spares are the big part of the game, and Butch Zedler just shows the style and the class of the type of player he is. Watch this young man from Akron, Ohio. Third time in the finals of the Akron Open. Dick, if I remember correctly, last year Todd started out in the fifth position and worked his way through the field to get into that championship match, shooting a 299 along the way, only to fall short to our 1986 champion, Kerry Barbera. Just like we said before, he won this tournament in 1985, his third year in the tournament, his third year in the finals. Todd A.G. for the two, four, eight, and he converts it. Dickie Todd seems to be quite relaxed out there. Again, a third time in the finals, it's got to make you quite relaxed. You know, Todd, uh, this is not the first time he has been on TV. Todd has been on the uh, Bowling Proprietors Pot of Gold Tournament that we've had in the past years. He's performed well on television. He likes the pressure. He likes to bowl in front of a crowd. Well, he's an accomplished player at a very young age, and uh, at 22, uh, he's a threat. He's got such great leverage. What's that arm swing? He trips a four, Jim. You know, a lot of bowlers uh, around the Akron area say, what, what's this Todd Agee? How does he do it? If you watch Todd, no matter whether he's throwing a strike ball or a spare ball, he's always making a nice continuous pass, or uh, we call it a pass, or a good arm swing. He makes that continual flow from the bottom of the swing to the ceiling, and his ball is always reacting the same way. It's good projection, just like Butch Stellar up on lane 22, bowling in the third frame, second frame. Great pitch that one that time, Dickie. Uh, Butch seems to be quite relaxed again. Uh, this is not the first time Butch has been on TV. He has been in the finals of the Pot of Gold TV program in the past. He seems to be quite relaxed. And again, I think a pattern is starting to form right here. Butch Steller can establish his own track. He can play his own line. He can make his own adjustments. He's the only left-hander in our top five finals, and I really think that's going to be to his advantage. Good projection. For the double. He's got it. He seems to be very relaxed, Dickie. Very, very relaxed. Again, we note that Butch Steller has not had a game under 200. The tournament, we had a six-game qualifier on Saturday. 96 players started the tournament. Those 96 bowlers returned on Sunday, February 22nd. The field was cut to the top 16 players. They bowled six more games, and the field was cut to the top five. And that's what we have now, five of the best players in the Akron Open. Here's former champion Todd Agee on lane 22. Another great swing. That's a great pitch that time, Dickie. Uh, last time he came in a little high. He moved over in lane 21, tripped out before, came in a little high. Looks like he made that proper adjustment. Well, I, uh, if I can tell here, the uh, characteristics is, uh, uh, for the right-handers, the left lane seems to be starting a little earlier and uh, always has here at Colonial Lanes. That left lane will hook a little quicker, uh, maybe finish a little stronger. So uh, we'll see Todd making the adjustment on lane 21. Had a tie ball game right now through the third frame. Todd Edge, you got a spare and a double, working in the fourth frame on lane 21. Good pitch. Great pass. Dickie, you know, Todd Agee's got one of the most powerful striking bowling balls in the Akron area, and a lot of people would like to know how he can put so much power on that bowling ball. Well, if you just watch Todd, he's in great leverage position. He's got good knee bend. He doesn't do a lot of twisting of the ball. He's not a Mark Roth or a Marshall Holman cranker. He's a leverage player. He lifts the ball and doesn't turn the ball a lot. But Steller in the fourth frame, working on a double, going for three in a row. Dickie, we got a tie ball game right now. Both players have got a spare in the first frame. Which Steller carrying that uh, 2 4 7 10 in the first frame. Came back with three in a row. Todd Agee got off to a little shaky start, leaving the 2 4 8 in the first frame. Comes back with three more strikes. Which Steller bowling on the left lane, lane 21 here at Colonial Village, working on three in a row. We got a tight one, Dickie. Well, I'll tell you, Jim, this is like a match between Chuck Norris and Sylvester Stallone. These two guys are going to fight right to the finish. 
Steller taking his time making some real good pitches. Something bothered him here. He's going to start over, and that's really the best thing to do whenever you're in doubt. Stop. It's not. Uh, you don't get penalized for starting over. You don't. It's not a balk like in baseball. If you don't feel comfortable, start over. Great concentration. Which knows what he wants to do. Another good pitch. He got a good left part. Good pitch. Oh, that one good. Yeah. You know, uh, Dick, this is probably the calmest I've seen Butch Steller throughout the whole tournament. I mean, he bowled 18 games all through qualifying and in the semifinal. He's running out shots and clapping, but that's the way he performs. He gets pumped up. Whenever he gets pumped up and starts throwing strikes, that's what he does. Right now, he seems to be very relaxed, making real good shots. Todd Agee coming up on lane 22. early in the match, but it seems to be like in a must-strike situation already. Dickie, yeah, I don't know, buddy. It seems like we're going to go 290, 290. What would happen in case of a tie? Well, Jim, as you know, just as the PBA does on national television, we would have a two-frame or a ninth and tenth frame roll-off between the two players in case of a tie, and that would decide the outcome of the match. And at this rate we're going right now, that could happen. Todd Agee's low game of the tournament. Uh, even 200. He has not had a game under 200. High game of the tournament. A blistering 280. Yeah. Yeah. Dickie got that one outside a little bit. Uh, seemed like he sort of pushed that ball out to the dry area a little bit, but it made the big turn. Got the good break. Well, that's the guys with the good leverage position. That's the, the, the top five you see here. The guys are both great all week. Got away with those kind of shots because they made great shots. And the mistake here at Colonial this weekend was get the ball to the right. If you were going to make a mistake, make it to the right. If you tug the ball a little bit, you left the ring in 10 or the flat 10. And you see both these players keeping the ball right on line and making just great, great arm swings. Young Butch Steller, age 22, working on a four-bagger, number five. You know, uh, Dickie, we're talking about these young Tigers here in the Akron area. Butch Steller is only 22, and uh, Todd A.G. is a, a ripe age of 21. They've got more 300s and more 800s than you and I have combined, and we've got probably 40 years of bowling experience behind us. What about these young kids today? What is it? Uh, Wheaties, they eat them for breakfast, or what is it that makes these young kids so tough? Well, I'll tell you, Jim, you know, it's uh, the equipment today, and uh, uh, these kids uh, had advanced training, probably uh, a more advanced training than even you and I had as, as well as we were trained, and uh, they're just great practicers, too, and look at that shot, he just saws a five and a half into the, into the ten. Good Steller in the seventh frame, six in a row, spare in the first frame, and has put together six strikes. Todd Agee has got a spare in the first frame, and a five bay, we're coming up in in the seventh frame on lane 22, again, we're dead even. Both these players, Jim, have come through the uh, Greater Akron Junior Bowling Association uh, and or and or the Bar Comp Association and uh, the great teachers of the, uh, and the uh, coaches that we have in the Akron area have helped promote this game so well. Great leverage, great turn. Todd A.G. And this, Dickie seems to be using that wall quite a bit. Uh, I don't know if that's going to get him in trouble or not. What do you think? He's uh, had quite a few shots. He come in a little light and uh, got the great carry off the sidewall. Do you think he should make an adjustment or should he stay where he's at? I don't think so for Todd A.G. I think uh, his, he's playing the loose shot and that's normally the wall. When he's got the wall shot going, he's going to hit the pocket uh, every time, uh, no matter what anyways. And when he gets the wall shot going for him, it just loosens him up that much more. Todd A.G., 21 years of age, has got so many titles, we can't name them all. He's been Beacon Journal Bowler of the Year twice. He's only 21 years of age. Strike again, Dickey. Eighth frame, spare in the first and seven in a row. But Steller is again in a strike situation. Right now, we have got two spares and all strikes. What a match. Nobody's letting up. You can start here in the crowd. We got a fine crowd here at Colonial Village Lanes, close to 400 people here watching the finals of the Akron Open. The alternate Dick Grant sitting in the bowler circle just missed by 21 pins. Dickie was in the uh, top five going into the last couple of games, got a bad break in the, in the last game to be the alternate. Wood Zeller keeps the pressure right on Todd Agee. 
Dickey, it's really getting down to that situation now where you just can't afford to make a mistake. Now, when you're in a situation like this and both players are going off at a 290 pace, uh, what goes through your mind? Are you worried about leaving a spare or what's going through your mind? It's all concentration right now. That's all these players are thinking about. They're not thinking about the crowd. They're not thinking about the money. They're thinking about making shots out there, getting the ball started properly, and hitting their target and making a good swing. Put Stellar Bowling in the eighth frame, going for his seventh strike in a row. He got away with one that time, Dick. He lost his balance at the line, but again, he had projection through the shot, got the ball through the target well, and the ball just laid up to the pocket. You know, if you take a look at Butch Zedner, he's in great physical shape, and uh, uh, that's an attribute to him, I'll tell you that, ladies and gentlemen. He's just uh, made a, a great shot off balance, out of leverage that time, but it was a tremendous power. Got that ball back to the pocket and carried. Todd Agee working on seven in a row, going on for his eighth in a row in the ninth frame. He must strike. He got it wide. He got it back. Unbelievable, Dickie. Both players are going off at a 290 pace. We could conceivably have a 290 tie, which will, and I don't have the records in front of me, but I'm sure it's probably the highest match in the finals in the eight-year history of the Akron Open. What an exciting match. It's definitely a record-setting pace we've got going here at Colonial Village Lanes, and now Todd Ag has an opportunity to put the pressure right back on Butch Zedler. Todd is going to finish first. If he strikes out here, he cannot lock out Butch Steller. Butch Steller will finish last and has a chance to tie. Tenth frame. Unbelievable, Dick. Every shot right in the pocket. Todd Ag has got nine in a row. What a, what a display by these two players. Boy, it's just a shame. When you get a match like this and someone's going to have to lose it, it, it's just a darn shame. These two players, 21 years of age by Todd Agee, 22 years of age by Butch Steller. Unbelievable striking performance by both players. Todd Agee, second ball in the 10th frame. This strike here will put him in the 280s. Good pitch. It's a little high. Here comes Dickie. Here comes the scout. Oh. Unbelievable, Dick. That head pin went to the sidewall, came back. It actually hit the 10 pin. Dickie, he can spare it off for 279. Well, here's our situation, Jim. Wood Zedler has got the ball on his court now, but he needs two in a row. It's a very important spare for Todd. It's the only He's got to have it. Uh-oh, Dickie, what does it do right now? He shoots 278. What are the possibilities right now? Well, now Butch has got to have the first one, and then just any type of spare. So the first ball here is the match right now with Butch Zeller. If he gets the first one, he'll just need a mark on his fill ball. Two strikes would give him another win. Butch Zeller's got eight in a row, going on the ninth in a row, coming up in the tenth frame. If he doesn't strike on his ball, he cannot win. He must strike on his ball. Concentration by the young left-hander. He put he a good that swing one, on it. He put a great swing shot. on it. Unbelievable. Well, here's our situation, bowling fans. Any type of swing, any type of mark here now. He will de defeat Todd Ag, but he must have a mark. Nine and a miss. It'll be a tie. If he gets Eight and one is a tie. How many lose? If he gets eight and one, he would lose, right, Dick? If he yes, gets eight, eight spare, one, lose. eight spare is a tie, nine spare is a win. The pressure is on Butch Steller. To move on to our next match against Jimmy Grant. Coming up in the 10th frame, he needs a nine spare or a strike, and he'll win this match. Another good pitch. Oh, you got eight, Dick. What do we got here, partner? <laughs> we got ourselves a chance for a tie. Or, no, it's either win or lose for Butch Zettler right now. If he chops it. If, if he makes this he tear, tops it, he, he shoots loses. 278, he would tie. If he misses it, he loses. Simple as that. He's got to have a spare to tie the match. Not an easy spare. In 10th frame roll off. How would you play this, Dickie? Under normal conditions, uh, he's going to move a little bit to his right. He'll put great roll on the ball, try to cover the both pins with the ball. 
those pins and right now look very, very small. The lane looks like it's 80 feet in length. What do we got? We got a tire, We'll be going into a ninth and 10th frame roll off. It's unbelievable. Both these two young lions, Butch Stellar, 278, Todd Agee, 278. We couldn't ask for a better performance by the two. Right now we've got a ninth and 10th frame roll off. Butch Stellar will throw the first shot on the left lane. He will sit down. Todd will bowl the ninth frame on 22 and go over to lanes 21 to finish out. Just an unbelievable performance by these two young players. Well, we've seen it all weekend long, and uh, it just brought it right into the show for us. Uh, great competition among these competitors. Butch Stellar, solid seven. That's the first solid seven that he has left uh, that we can recall. Dick, he probably in the last five games, he shoots 279. In the next last game of the semifinals, he shoots 279. In the last game of the semifinals, he starts off this game with 245 and follows it up with another 278. Just an unbelievable performance by this young left-hander. We're in the ninth and tenth frames. Sudden death roll-off. The conversion of the seven. You know, bowling fans, we talked about the importance of the spares, and you've seen Todd Agee slip by that 10-pin on his fill ball. Put him in a situation of a tie. Had he made that, he would have won that match. So strikes are a big thing, a big part of the game. But as we've always, always said, spares are what makes the, puts the game together. That's so true, Dick. You know, you see a lot of these young guys just practicing strikes, but they should take their time, make those spares, because that is very important. Todd Agee pulling his ninth frame in his sudden death roll on. Yeah, Unbelievable, Dick. He just a great performance by these two young champions. We forgot to allude uh, to our payoff, uh, fifth position, which went to Marty Rigby. He's going to pick up a check for $450. The loser of this match will get $550. Dickey, the total person, the 1987 Akron Open, was $7,600. Another great tournament by Rick Davis and his staff here at Colonial Village Lanes. Todd Agee in the 10th frame of the ninth, 10th, sudden death roll-off. Todd Agee is really applying the pressure now. What is that situation we're in right now? Uh, Dickey looks like uh, uh, Todd, if he strikes here, it's over. You're absolutely right. He can lock him out with this one here. All he has to do is strike on this ball and stay behind the foul line. And Todd Agee will go to our next match against Dickey, uh, Jimmy Grant. Another big pitch for this young lion, 21 years old, Todd Agee. He carries. Looks like a ball game to me, Dickey. What a great, great loose swing, and Todd Agee defeats Butch Stellar, and Butch is a true champion that he is. It's just Old unbelievable, fantastic. Dickey, that, you know, you shoot such a great game like uh, Butch did, 278, to lose the match in a roll-off like that. It's just unbelievable. But when you're in the finals of the Akron Open, you're just going to have to put numbers on the board. Staying behind the foul line, and that's All he exactly wanted to do. what he did. And Butch Stellar, the solid seven cost him. He bowled fantastic. Well, the winner, a real nice round of applause from this crowd here at beautiful Colonial Lanes. The winner of our next match, Todd Agee will be taking on Jimmy Grand. Butch Stellar picks up the check for $550 in the first time he's made the finals here in the Akron Open. Unbelievable performance, Dickey. Unbelievable. You know, Dick, we have a lot of great tournaments here in the, Akron, uh, in the Akron area. You know, something going on all the time. We're seeing the best scratch players in Akron, Ohio right now, but you know there are other tournaments in the area for lower average people. Yeah, tell us a little bit about the uh, ABA, Jim. You know, there's the ABA is the Amateur Bowlers Association Tour, Dick. We have uh, a tournament set up on a touring basis where we travel around the Northeast Ohio area. The unique thing about the ABA Tour is it's set up for people who average less than 200. These players just don't have the talent to go against the, the likes of the Todd Agers and the Butch Stellers. But we have a tour for these people. Everything is done on a handicap basis. Uh, we have over 15 tournaments a year. 
We, last year we paid out over $40,000 in prize money and it's a great organization for young people who want to start out in tournament experience and work their way through the ranks. Well, as you can see, the type of format we have this evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Jim, uh, what's the format? What, uh, what is the format you use for the ABA? Well, the ABA Tour, Dickie, we have a four-game qualifier, and uh, on Sundays, it's a one-day tournament. We started out at 11 o'clock in the morning. One out of every six bowlers from the qualifying round will go to the semifinals. We have another qualifying round at 1 o'clock, and those uh, bowlers will, again, one out of six will go to the semifinals. In the semifinals, the bowlers will bowl two games. We will cut to the field to the the top tw uh, 10 bowlers after two games, they will bowl two more, we will cut the field to the top five, and then they will experience the finals, just like we are experiencing here in the Akron Open. First place guaranteed on the ABA Tour is $700, $400 guaranteed for second place. Well, that's just got to be great for the amateur bowlers. Uh, gives them the chance, uh, and we probably have, I know that there's some of the uh, ABA members are here this evening. I noticed some of them, and they're out here watching the, the uh, what's this, the next step up, I guess we could say. Well, that's true. It's the next step up. You know, if anybody would like to bowl on the ABA tour, you can call 336-3223. That's the ABA tour, 336-3223. We're getting ready for match three. Yeah. Todd Ag. They're ready to play. On the left lane. He just come off that lane with a toward 278 game, and he starts right away. Dicky, uh, Todd Ag just came off that uh, 278 game. He wins a ninth and tenth frame roll off. You know, after being so pumped up and being so high for that whole game, do you think that's a disadvantage to uh, to Todd Ag? Well, there's no doubt that there, there can be a letdown, but after a game like 270, and after the way that Todd's been bowling the whole weekend and the toward pace that was set here by the players, uh, you know, uh, uh, 270, I'm not going to say it was a ho-hum game, but uh, uh, I think Todd can keep the pressure on. Uh, for him, 270 is like getting up in the morning, it seems like. Jimmy Grant, first time we've seen him in the final of the Akron Open. A lot of people know Jimmy Grant from Grand Lanes and the Grand Bowling family. Of course, we had three Grands here in the Akron Open. His brother, Blaine Grant, and of course, cousin Dickie Grant, who is our alternate, who just missed the TV show in a, a phenomenal last game uh, in the semifinals this afternoon. Yeah, Dickie bowled the only game he bowled the whole tournament under 200. The last game just did not have the carry that he had had. And if you were here, ladies and gentlemen, you've seen the pressure-packed shots that were made by the players this afternoon. Jimmy Grant on the left lane in the second frame, going for two in a row. Dickie, you know Jimmy's got that big churn ball. He uh, keeps everything in play. Uh, I've seen him play the wide angle shots. I've seen him play them nice and tight up the track. Right now, he seems to be throwing the ball a little softer than he normally has, but he's got a lot of revolutions, a lot of power on that bowling ball. For the classic style of Jimmy Grant, the low ball placement for the player like a Marshall Holman. You know, bowlers, uh, uh, ball placement is so important. If you watch Todd Agee, he's a little slower to the foul line. He's still got the low ball placement, and Jimmy Grant a little more aggressive to the foul line and with the low ball placement. Todd Agee just keeps the pressure on. You know, Dickie, this is the third finals for Todd Agee. Of course, he won it in 1985 last year. He was runner-up to Kerry Barbera, and uh, he, would, he would like to be the first player to win two Akron Open championships. It's never been done. We've had such great past winners as Ron Bell, Tim Elsass, Tom Lucian, to great Jeff Mirage in 1983, Jack Lenhart in 1984, of course, A.G. in 85, and last year, Kerry Barbera. Again, something broke his concentration. It might give us an opportunity, Dickie, to run down to some of our other players who made a few dollars here in the Akron Open. Uh, you know, we did have 24 cash positions here in the Akron Open. We paid out over $7,600, and uh, maybe we can go through some of our other cash positions. Todd A.G. on lane 21. A great pitch. shot. Another Gary's fine a pitch. 10. Shaking his head a little bit, uh, Jim, but uh, <laughs> just a continual pace that these, these players have put on. And uh, as we run down the, uh, the uh, top 24 and the 24 spot, uh, Donna Lass, pulled great, average 218. 
Finished 217 pins over 200 average. John Vinson finishing 23rd. Bob Hemminger making a comeback after an injury. Bowled real good this weekend. Jimmy Granoline, 22 going for three in a row. Uses the wall to his advantage with that great turn, great leverage. Three in a row. Well, Jimmy, as you know, uh, is uh, lives in the South Akron area. And, uh, of course, uh, Grand Lane's where he, his father owns is not too far from Colonial Village here. Uh, he's got a lot of supporters here, and he looks where to go tonight. You know, Dickie, you're talking about John Hulas, who finished 24th here in this year's Akron Open, owns Universal Naturescape serving the Akron area and Fairlawn area for commercial and residential lawn service. Now John has pledged $300 to anyone shooting a 300 game in the Akron Open and right now Dickie we've got two of them going. Jimmy Graham with his classic style just rips the five out of there. A great shot in lane 21 and he's gonna have to throw strikes. Todd Agee coming off 270. He's lined up. Jimmy Graham's jumped right into this match and got himself lined up right away. Basically all we've seen throughout the whole telecast is just a lot of strikes. These bowlers are not making any mistakes. Young Todd Agee with a great pitch. He got it wide, but he got it back. Dickie, I noticed on Todd's game, uh, you know, he can send it wide and the ball comes back and lays right up into the pocket. Could that be the way the ball is drilled with the ball weights? Well, I'm not quite sure what weights uh, Todd's using, but uh, as you know, Jim, uh, the weights in the bowling ball, uh, the wor where you drill the three holes in the bowling ball has a lot to do with the balance of the ball. And when you get some uh, right side weight on the ball, the ball's going to finish a little bit harder. And I'm sure these pl players using these urethane covered bowling balls are all using positive weights here at Colonial. Todd A.G. bowling in the frame number five, working on the first four. Lane 21 on the TV pair here at Colonial Village Lanes in the 1987 Akron Open. Another strike by young Todd Agee. Dickie, what kind of uh, pressure does this put on Jimmy Grant? His first time he's in the top five of the Akron Open, and he's bowling against Todd Agee. Uh, probably got the best record in the Akron Open. Uh, I think there's only one player that's won more money in the Akron Open. That's Ronnie Bell, and of course everybody knows Ronnie Bell's currently on the Pro Bowlers Tour doing very well, I might add. But there's a lot of pressure on Jimmy Grant at the moment. Well, Jim's been around a long time. He tugged that shot a little. I seem to have lost that one at the line a little bit, Dick. Well, you saw him checking the approach there, uh, Jim. Uh, I think he's he slid a bit. He, he is a little bit slick where he landed there, and uh, he did not have his footing, and consequently pulled the ball to the pocket. He leaves the 6-10. Jimmy Grant shooting cross alley at the 6-10. Going to use the whole lane for this. Takes a little bit off the shot. Dick, you know, ironic thing about this match, last year in uh, Las Vegas, Nevada, Jimmy Grant teamed with Todd Agee to finish second in the Bowler's Journal Doubles Classic in, in Las Vegas, Nevada last year. They were teammates last year. This year, they're going at each other for the Akron Open title. All these competitors are friends, uh, uh, bowling every week with each other and bowling these tournaments against each other. And uh, right now down there, they're bowling for blood, though. That's one nice thing about the bowling community here in the Akron, Ohio area. They're very competitive when they're on the lanes, but when we're off the lanes, they're very friendly. Yes! Oh, oh, Dickie, what happened there, buddy? The solid seven, the Don Johnson solid seven, as we've called it here for years. Just a great, great shot by Jim Graham. The ball just finished strongly, and the four pin will go over the top of the seven and just does not carry out. It's just a bad break. One of the two taps of bowling. Jimmy Grant will be shooting the seven pin from the extreme right side of the lane. The 1986 Stark County Devils champion with Daryl Thompson going for the seven pin. And he's got it. <laughs> Running down a few more of our finalists, cashers, here in the 1987 Akron Open. Jack Lenhart finished 21st. Another grand for you here, Blaine Grand finishing 20th. Don Whited finishing 19th. All the players averaging close to 220 in this area. 
tied A.G. Bowling in the sixth frame. He's clean, all strikes going in frame number six. Got the wiggle out of the seventh pin that time, Dickey. Uh, just came in a little light, didn't get that good carry off the sidewall that he's, he's had in the previous frames. Just did not get the, uh, wasn't as aggressive as a shot he'd been throwing. Uh, didn't look like he got the great hit on that ball. And I mean, when you're throwing as many strikes as Todd's thrown already, it's just hard to keep up the constant pressure that he's had to put on the players that he's had to oppose already. He goes for the spare and converts it. That AG seemed to be quite relaxed, shooting a 278, tying Butch Deller, 270, 278, but winning the ninth and 10th frame were all off to put him in this position. The winner of this game will go into the championship match against a tour veteran in Ted Malecki. Tied AG on the left lane, lane 21, here at Colonial Village Lanes. Good pitch. Nicky seems like he can get that ball wide. It will come back, and he can yank it a little bit, and the ball lays right up. What a player this young man is. He's got a great game, and uh, I look for him to be one of the young lions in this area for a long time. And who knows, someday we might be seeing Todd Ag on national television with our own Ron Bell, who's out there competing now. Jimmy Grant on lane 22 has got a four-bagger in the first four frames, and he's got two spares working. Rolling on lanes 22. There it is. Gets a good carry off of uh, sidewall on lane 22. Uh, again, we trying to go over some of the scores. You know, uh, the 18-game tournament here in the Akron Open. Low game for Jimmy Grant, 170. It's the only game he had under 200 throughout the whole tournament. Unbelievable performance by these players. Uh, the first three games that Jimmy Bowley had 705, the second three games he had 706. Just an unbelievable performance by this young man. 32 years of age, he's been in the bowling business since he was a young man of probably five or six. Yeah. Puts the pressure right back on him, Dickie. Well, we expected this out of Jim Grant. He's a veteran. He's been around, and he really wants his title. Uh, you know, player, bowlers, the uh, players here, are, they are bowling for a lot of money, but it's the prestigious titles, which is what they're really looking for here. I really don't even think they're thinking about the money right now, uh, Dickie. You know, of course, money, you spend the money, and uh, it could be here today and gone tomorrow, but when you win the Akron Open, they can never take away the title. Todd A.G. Bowling in the eighth frame, lane 22, working on a strike. Needs this to keep the pressure on, and he trips the 4-7, Jim. A little high hit there, but with the great roll and the great leverage that Todd A.G. presents to us this evening, he just trips that 4-7 out, and when you got it going, you got it going. That seems to be true, Dick, when you've got that nice, free, loose arm swing, those trip four pins seem to fall. You seem to be carrying those ten pins quite relevant. It's unbelievable how these young players can play. Todd A.G. in the ninth frame. Starts out the first five in a row. Got a spare in the sixth frame. Working on a double. Going off at a 240 pace. That puts him right now in the 250 range. He can strike out for 279. What a difference in the two shots. On lane 22, he comes up high and trips a four. On lane 21, he goes wide and brings it back and swishes a rack. Does he got all the shots or what, Jim? Unbelievable talent, this young Todd Agee. Jimmy Grant coming up on lane 22 is going off right now at a 237 pace. He wires out for 267. That will not shut out Todd Agee. He can still go 279. Oh, unbelievable, Dick, the 467. Boy, Jimmy just did not make a good pass at that. He laid that ball a little short and pulled it and over top with the hand. Uh, a couple different things that you can do when the ball goes starts on you early like that and just a real bad spot. He just seemed to, to get rid of it early. He didn't have that good projection that he normally has under these circumstances. It looks like he's, uh, he's got put no himself choice. into a little bit of a hole right now, Dick. He's got no choice but to go for it, Jim. How would you go for a 4-6-7, Dickie? You, I think what you'll see Jim do is throw the high hard one at him and try to bounce, try to bounce that six pin. Oh, Ooh. he tried uh, something new, Dick. He tried to slide that six over into the seven, hoping that the six pin would hit ricochet off the seven and twist into the four. Well, the count just didn't, the count was irrelevant there. He had to make the split, and the easiest way to make that one would be to slide that six over, and he gave it a shot. 
situation right now. Jimmy Grant can strike out for 2.30. Todd Agee is going off at a 2.58 pace. It doesn't look too good. A little soft, better shot. Well, this match is in the bag again for Todd Agee. Uh, no matter what happens here where Jimmy Grant's finished that open costume, but boy, he's got nothing to be ashamed of. He's going to finish in the elusive third position here. Well, he's going to pick up a check for $650. Not a bad payday, not a bad tournament for Jimmy Grant. And he'll be back. I guarantee you, Bowling fans, you're going to see a lot of this guy in the Akron Open because he just has a great shot here in Colonial. He's going to finish out with 220. Of course, Todd Agee can finish out with 279. That gives us a little time to reflect on our next match, Dickie, Ted Malecki. What can we say about Ted Malecki? He's got six PBA regional titles. He's a national resident pro champion. He's bowled in the Firestone Tournament of Champions. He led this tournament, shooting 300 the first game. Unbelievable. On the second and Todd Agee is a young tiger. He is a winner, 1985. Last year he was runner-up. We've got a classic match coming up in a championship round. Well, we've got the veteran against the, the young lion, Ted Malecki, uh, his wife Phyllis here tonight, here to watch him bowl. He just pulled great. I mean, uh, uh, Ted started the tournament with a 300 game. I mean, uh, how nice can that be uh, to start off the tournament, huh, Jim? Uh, and then today, uh, uh, let me just kind of give you, uh, uh, Bowling fans, a little idea of some of the scores that Ted shot today. Just the last eight games, Ted Malecki shoots 255, 246, 246, 237, 246. And just a tour, just a... Last six games, after a cut of the top 16, uh, for the lead, but uh, between him and Todd, and uh, it's been against, it's been, been him and Todd, Jim, uh, the true. whole weekend, and uh, it's really coming down to the classic battle. And Dickie, isn't that the way it should be? The two players that have bowled the best throughout the week should be meeting for the title. Todd Agee filling out the 10th frame here, can finish with 258 with, whoop, he fouled. He fouled. You know, I've noticed that sometime about Todd. He slides a little bit. He gets a foul. It finishes with 248 to Jimmy Grant's 220. We got Here a classic match with the, with the uh, flag. He knows he's got his hands full with Todd Agee. I think we have a chance again to talk a little bit about the great tournaments we have in the Akron area. Of course, the Five Aces Classic out at Bel Air Lanes. Again, that starts in uh, April the 24th and runs through Labor Day. It's a great summer tournament. The cost is $23 per bowler. First place is $5,000. One in 10 will cash. So give all of our friends a call out at Bel Air Lanes for the Five Aces Classic. The phone number out there is 644-2316. That's 644-2316. And of course, we have a lot of amateur tournaments going on right now in the Akron area, the Amateur Bowlers Association Tour, the ABA Tour. If your average is less than 200 and you would like to experience the thrill of bowling in the finals, just like these players are tonight in the Akron Open, you qualify for the ABA Tour. The ABA Tour is open for men and ladies who average less than 200, so give them a call at 336-3223. The ABA Tour is 336-3223. Two, three. And of course, we can't say enough about Colonial Village Lanes. What a beautiful job Rick Davis has done here in the finals of the Akron Open, uh, the eighth annual Akron Open. Rick Davis just put on a great tournament, Dickie. Good scoring conditions. We filled the tournament, 96 players, entry fee $100. We had a waiting list to get in. Unbelievable. Well, let's talk a little more about, uh, about the facility they have here at Colonial Lanes. Uh, you know, fans, they've got 32 beautiful Brunswick lanes here, and uh, in the, they're getting ready to start their summer program. Uh, they're signing up for summer bowlers here, a uh, combination of mixed leagues. They've got men's trios this summer. And uh, so for your summer fun, give them a call here at Colonial Lanes at 773-8286. Ask for Amy Shoeline. She'll set you up in the summer league. Air-conditioned comfort here at beautiful Colonial Lanes, the host of the Akron Open.
Dicky, we are uh, still warming up here, getting ready for that championship match. Uh, you know, Ted's been a veteran of the Pro Bowlers Tour. What kind of strategy do you think that he will put on young Todd Agee? I look for Ted just to bowl Ted's game. Uh, he's going to fold 10 frames here uh, uh, as hard as he can bowl them. And uh, if he needs the 11th and the 12th, he'll use them. For I Ted Malek, he's a great player. That, uh, we're going to see a great match. I noticed that Todd Agee starting the match on lane 21. That means that he will finish last on lane 22. That could be a little strategy. I think the reasoning be is that if he has to throw a strike to win the match, then he would have to do it. Starting out the first frame of the championship match. Agee keeps the pressure on. And now we're going to get a chance to look at Ted Malecki. Ted from Macedonia, Ohio, 38 years old, owns his own pro shop, Jim, and has been in the uh, pro shop business for uh, quite a few years now, and uh, I know a lot of the uh, Cleveland players go to see Ted to get their bowling balls uh, uh, fit up, and uh, a lot of the uh, Akron area players go up in that area, too. Uh, Ted's been around this game for a long time, and uh, you're going to see a lot of experience out here tonight. Great approach of Ted Malicki, nice and smooth. He let it loose. He's still playing Just with that outside line, Dick. He, play, he played that outside line throughout most of the tournament. It seemed like it worked real well for him, but uh, that time, maybe he just came out of a little early, but the ball just did not make the turn. For bowling fans, when you're sitting on the sidelines and you're waiting and you're waiting and the other players already warmed up, and you start out with a dinner bucket. It's not an easy spare, and especially under these conditions with the pressure Todd Agee's been putting on. Lucky for the conversion of the 2-5-8. And he got a break off the wall, Dick. And he thanks the bowling gods for that one. He seemed to uh, get to the oil, and the ball just sort of slid by the 2-5. He kicked out the 4-pin as it went by and into the 8-pin. Uh, that might loosen him up a little bit here, Dickie, but, uh, you know, you just can't do that too much with young Todd Agee because Todd's just going to come out and throw strikes at him. Well, Todd's got the shot going, and Ted's got to find it yet, and that's going to be the difference. Ted Malicki on the left lane in the second frame. That's a much better pitch. Carries out the 10 pin. You know, we could talk about Ted Malicki all day. Of course, he started out the tournament on Saturday morning. 300 out of the box. Follows it up with 247, 247, 794, ladies and gentlemen. That's 194 over, only six pins away from that 800 series. Ted's lowest game of the tournament was only 175, and that's the only game he's had under the 200 mark. Todd Agee. He can keep the pressure on. Nice approach of Todd Agee. Good pitch. Right in there, Dick. Oh, he got it inside the oil, little Jim, and he leaves the bucket on the same lane. So you can see the pressure is already starting to tell on these two players. Todd Agee, who looks so comfortable coming into this match, and now he leaves the dinner bucket on the right-hand lane. As we bowl, bowlers, as the oil drags down the lane, sometimes the conditions can change a little bit. We might see that happening here tonight at Colonial Lanes. Dicky, when you're, uh, you mentioned the fact that the oil gets carried down the lane a little bit. For some of our amateur players watching tonight, what do you mean by oil being carried down the lane and how do you overcome that and what do you have to look for? How can you tell that the oil is getting carried down the lane? Well, you know, Jim, to protect the finish on the lanes from the ball pounding, that is a wood finish out there. And it has a urethane coating on it, but to protect the urethane coating in the finish, we, apl we apply oil to it. This will keep it from wearing down. And as the oil gets on the ball, it'll travel down the lane. Sometimes the players will move to the right to adjust on an oily back end. Todd Agee in the third frame on lane 21. Three and 10, Dickie. He doesn't seem to, to have that great strike ball. Uh, you think maybe he's a little soft, he's trying to play a little cautious, or uh, he just doesn't seem to be aggressive? Well, this is a whole different match now. He's bowling Ted Malek, he's bowling a player with some experience. He knows he's going to have to throw strikes to win this match, and he looks a little apprehensive. You're right, Jim. This is a big spare for him right here. That age, he's shooting cross lane for the 10-pin on lane 21 here in the Akron Open. Yeah. He's got it. Ted Malecki coming up in the third frame. Spare in the first, strike in the second. He could put the pressure right back on Todd Agee with a double right here. Dickey came up a little light in the first frame on lane 22. He left the bucket to two, four, five, eight. What kind of adjustments is he going to have to make? I look for Ted just to throw a better shot. I think he had his feet in the right place. He just did not get a good release on that first pitch. 
and this one to be a lot better. Hmm. Well, my prediction is wrong. Maybe he uh, made it too much of an adjustment. Normally what you do when you, you come in a little light and leave the 245, your natural instincts tell you to move a board to the right to get more back-end reaction. Uh, looks like Ted probably made too much of an adjustment or just pulled it a little bit too much. Well, as we said earlier, bowling fans a mistake. If you were going to make one, as you want it to be to the right. Ted pulled that ball and got it left of his target and consequently went through the nose. The conversion of the three six, and he's got it. These two players are bowling for a grand total of $2,400. $1,500 going to our champion, $900 going to our runner-up. But more importantly is that Akron Open title. Of course, the winner gets a paid entry into next year's Akron Open. Just a few more names here for our top 24 finishers. Frank Apollo, Dave Swally just missed the top 16. Ken Smythe, Garrick Black. <laughs> All players have bowled great this weekend at Colonial Lanes. Ted Malecki bowling in the fourth frame. Got a little more to the outside. Trips out the 4-7. Dickey seems to be a little soft. Uh, you know, we watched him through the 18 game uh, Saturday and Sunday. Seemed to be very aggressive with good speed, good leverage. Right now, Ted seems to be a little soft. Do you think that's part of his game plan? Or uh, is it just the lane conditions that are, are suited to a softer rolling shot? I just think the, uh, the uh, apprehensiveness is from the pressure being applied just by bowling under these hot lights and under this competition here. Todd Agee in the fourth frame working on he a spare. He made a good swing on that one. That's right, Dickie. That's the real key. I see Jim. Uh, now, Todd was not apprehensive on that. He went straight through that. I noticed Ted is not making a real good pass out of it or a good swing, and I think that's going to make the difference. Todd chooses a re-rack on lane 21. When he chooses a re-rack, Dickey and Todd got one on lane 21, what is he looking for when he re-racks? Well, sometimes, uh, Jim, the players will just do it just to get a little, little regrouping of their thoughts, but I think in this case, Todd just did not like the way the pocket was set up. Uh, you're dealing with 20, 22 pins in a, in a rack, and sometimes you'll get a pin wobbling a little bit, or you don't like the way it's set up, or you just don't like the way the, the pocket looks, so you re-rack them and get something fresh to look at. Todd Agee on the left lane, working in the fifth frame, got a strike up in the fourth. You can put the pressure right back on Ted Malecki with a double right here. There it is, Dickey. He seems to be aggressive. He's got that nice aggressive shot. That gives him a double in the fourth and the fifth frame. He's got 59 in the third, a double working. Ted Malecki's got a 60 in the third with a strike working. If he strikes right here, he still maintains that one pin advantage. Ted is coming up on a lane, Dickey, where he's had a six-pin count and an eight-pin count. He's gone light. He's gone high. What kind of adjustments do you think he's going to make? I look for Ted to make a good swing here. Yeah, I think he made a little adjustment to the left, though. I think a spot of the move will make about a board and a half move mm. right through the beak. Yeah, that's something that you just don't want to see. We call that in the bowling world is the Greek church, the 4-6. Seven, nine, ten. Dickey, we're in the in the fifth frame. He's got a bad count up there, a five-pin count, but right now it's not coming into play. Right now, uh, the most important thing for Ted is a mark. Uh, is this spare makeable? Well, it's a very difficult spare, Jim. And the, really, the only way to make it uh, is to shoot the four-seven. You have to go after the low count and slide that over. Uh, I look for Ted to go for the count. He's a veteran. He knows there's a lot of game left here. He does just three. that. Ooh, and he gave it a little shot, and as we knew he would. <laughs> and that puts uh, Ted into a uh, pretty bad situation right now. He's going off at around a 185 pace. Todd Agee currently is going off at a 209 pace. Ted Malecki right now is down 23 pins, but like we've said before, Ted Malecki has got national touring experience. He's bowled the Firestone. He's got a national title. He's been on national TV. He's a veteran of the game. 38 years of age, Ted Malecki on the left lane. That's a much better pitch, Dick. Well, uh, you see the player leave the split and then right away comes back and throws it right in the pocket and just pays for it. Uh, that's what happens under these conditions when you're bowling under these pressure pack conditions. The crowd gives it a known here as Ted Malecki can, shoots the 10 pin on lane 21. A great spare shooter and a, just a classic style Ted has and uh, now Todd Agee, he's got the uh, 
the ball on his side of the field right now, Jim. Uh, I look for Todd to stay aggressive. I look for Todd to put a lot of pressure. If he's going to do it, this is his opportunity right here in the sixth frame. Todd Agee bowling on lane 22, the right lane on the championship pair in the Akron Open. Working on to 59 and third with two strikes working. Going for three. This will take him up. 33 pins if he strikes right here. He did just that. He Unbelievable. did just that. Todd is pumped up and he is really throwing the ball good, Dick. He's got those strikes working for him. Todd A.G. coming up on the left lane. Working on three in a row. He can really put the pressure on him right now. Bob Bracey bowled good this weekend. Jim, Jeff Moraz, a former champion, finished 13th. Tommy Sukon, the Hall of Famer, finished 12th. Bowled great this weekend. Young Todd Agee, 21 years of age. High game of the week, 280. Low game of the week, 200. Oh, 10 pin, Dick. Couldn't have thrown it much better than that, but a nice loose swing on it. The ball came in a little bit late, but it was a great shot. Uh, that's been probably the stickler this weekend here at Colonial Lanes, and the players got it going a little bit. Probably not why we probably didn't see more 300s, is a 10-pin would be stubborn every once in a while, and they pulled the ball a little bit, got it in the oil a little soon, the 10-pin wouldn't go out. That AG's up 32 pins, bowling in the seventh frame. Shooting cross alley to 10. Unbelievable, Dickie. What, uh, what does this do? It opens the door for Ted right now. Well, the inexperience sometimes comes out in a pressure situation. On the short oil finished, short oil condition when bowling on the 10 pin, it's a tougher spirit today than it was before, Jim. And uh, if you pull it a little bit shooting that 10 pin, it's going to go early on you. And it's happened to Todd twice. You've got to stay aggressive on the spirits. And the one thing you don't want to do to a veteran like Ted Malenke is open the door. Right now, Ted bowling in the seventh frame. Expect a good pitch here. There it is, Dickie. Whenever you give the veteran like that a chance, he's going to come right back on you. Now, Ted, with the strike coming up in the eighth frame, will cut the lead of Todd Agee to only 10 pins. Well, this is where they separate the uh, great bowlers from the great bowlers. <laughs> you can't say enough about the way these guys are performing. And nobody's going to be a loser here today. And let's watch the veteran Ted Malecki on lane 21. He can put the pressure right back on Todd Agee. Ted's got a good shot on lane 21. Three balls so far in lane 21. Been in the he pocket. He likes it. Ooh, it seemed to lose his footing a little bit. He, uh, Dickie, it seemed he had either stuck at the line or he just got through the arm swing too much. He just didn't make a good shot. I think he was a little surprised that ball didn't get back. Uh, just did not get the good leverage on it. Uh, taking no time to shoot the spare. And uh, being a veteran he is, he converts it. Well, that's a break for Todd Agee because that puts his lead right back up to 20 pins. Todd Agee bowling in the eighth frame. He's got an open in the seventh. It may not be a high-scoring match, Dickey, like we've had in the past, but that doesn't matter. The point is it's still exciting. It's close. So it's within 20 pins. It's anybody's ball game. Todd Agee up on the left lane, bowling in the eighth frame, and the Akron open. Good pitch. That'll get there. Oh. What happened on that, Dick? Looked like the ball laid right into the pocket. Well, I think he was a little softer. The lanes have broke down now with, in our last match and the heat here. And uh, probably where he threw that ball like that, a game before this had been dead pack in the pocket. But the way the lane, the characteristics here, Colonial Lane has broke down a little bit. And the ball finished real sharply, and he left a solid 4-7. Todd shooting cross alley to 6-10, makes the conversion with no problem. Guaranteed, you'd rather shoot that than that solid 10 pin, Jim. I think we've got an interesting situation right now. Todd A.G. is going off at a 206 pace. Ted Malakey can strike out for 206. We may have a tie. It's a very important frame for Todd A.G., the ninth frame. 
what we call the foundation frame of bowling. That's the one where you set the tenth up. This is a big, big frame. If he wants to keep the pressure on Ted Malecki and have a chance to be the first two-time champion of the Akron Open. Todd elected to take another re-rack on lane 21. He didn't like the, the looks of the rack. Most of these players have got that keen eye. They like to see every pin on spot in perfect alignment. Todd Agee in the ninth frame. Good pitch. He likes it. He likes it. Yeah, what a great later. swing you put on that one, Jim. And I'm watching him from back here just through our monitor. And just what a great swing he put on that. And he has got the pressure right back on Ted Malecki. Ted has no choice. He's got to throw, throw some strikes and he's got to do it now. Ted Malecki coming up on lane 22 in the ninth frame. He's in a must strike situation. He's down 20 pins, two frames to go. Again, anything can happen. If he wants to win this championship, he's going to have to strike on his ball. I don't know, Dick. It just seems like uh, his arm swing is getting there before he wants it to get there, and he seems to overturn it, putting the ball in the oil a little bit too early, and it just didn't pick up that good roll. Well, it's uh, it's just sometimes the way it works in a game of bowling, and uh, that's what makes it so great, uh, bowling fans. Uh, uh, the sometimes you bowl as great as you bowl, and then sometimes you just can't get anything going, and. Uh, Ted, uh, I guarantee you, this is his first Akron Open, but uh, we're going to see him, you know, we call him a veteran, and we act like he's uh, uh, 60 or 70-some years old, but uh, this guy's been around a long time, uh, but he's still a young man, and uh, of course, we like to think 38's young, don't we, Jim? Well, that's for sure. Uh, i like to see 38 again. Here we go in the 10th frame, Ted Malecki. He can strike out Dickey for 195, and what that will do is force Todd A.G. to mark. It's not over yet. He got it out that time. He's Anything can happen here, boy. That's fans. for sure. Uh, you know, again, we allude it's not a high-scoring match. It's not, it's not that 278, 278 that we've seen earlier. But again, it's exciting. We're going for the championship. Ted Malinke has got to have this strike right here. If he has any prayer of winning this title at all, he must strike on this ball right now. Gave it more speed, and you could tell the reaction. Well, here's our situation, bowling fans. One more strike here will give Ted Malecki 195. If Todd Agee marks in any way, he'll be the 1987 Akron Open champion. Pin count's very important here, Dickie, because if he gets nine, Todd can tie, but if he strikes, Todd has to have a mark. There it is. Just that. It sets it up. Todd Agee has to have a mark to be the only person to win two Akron Open titles. It's coming down to one frame. 18 grueling games of qualifying. Todd Agee's worked so hard, worked so demanding this weekend. He wants to be the first player ever to win this title twice. Let's yeah, watch him on give it a good shot. This young person is a great player. Great release, Dickie. He it's grabbed there. all of it. He grabbed all Here of it. He is. Here we have a champion. We have our champion. Todd Agee Todd is Agee. the first player to win two Akron Open titles. It's unbelievable. He wins in 1985. He's the runner-up in 1986. And again, here in 1987, Dickie's only 21 years of age. And you notice the sportsmanship. Ted Malecki, the first one to hit him on the hand when he came back. And the great camaraderie, camaraderie we have among the, among the players. And... Uh, Todd is finishing him off. Just and finishing that, just ladies that. and gentlemen. Of course, Todd Agee was our pre-tournament favorite. Everybody in the city of Akron predicted this young man to win this tournament, and it's a very difficult thing to do to win the Akron Open. 96 of the best players in the Akron area bowled a 12-game qualifier. And what you've seen tonight, ladies and gentlemen, were the top five players, and of course, the best of them all is young Todd Agee. There it is. There's our oh, champion. The 1987 champion, Todd Agee, 226 to Ted Malakia's 195. Just an unbelievable performance by this young man. Vicky, we can't say enough about Kyle Ted Malakia. Interesting finish, huh, Jim? It's the high scores. We had the whole night long, and then here we come to the clutch final match, and uh, it was shot-making at its finest. Okay, right now we're going to go to Rick Davis, who's going to 
give us our presentations of our champions and our all of our top five finalists. What a great job, huh? Can't say much uh, about Rick and what, what a what a nice tournament he put on here. Uh, and also, we should thank Snidebar for a great job they did. Uh, great job they did for us. I hope uh, you can pick up some of the, what Dicky, what uh, Ricky Davis is talking about, our tournament director. He's thanking everybody right now. He's thanking all the scorekeepers, of course, Dave Miller, the Alicat, of course, John Halas, who put up $300 for any 300 shot. Rick's thanking the crowd now for the, just a great, uh, the great way they acted here tonight, and that's, uh, you know, that's all, of, that's all part of it, uh, Bowling fans, is uh, having that crowd on your side uh, and keeping quiet when you got to make great shots. Here it is, Marty Raby finishing in the fifth position, his first Akron Open, making that TV Finals, finishing fifth, he picks up $450. Rich Deller who shoots at 278 and loses to Todd Agee in the ninth and 10th frame roll-off. Butch picks up a check for $550. I'll be betting with Butch here real soon in the uh, ABC doubles and I'm looking forward to him shooting a couple of those 279s for us. There he is, the 1986 Stark County Masters doubles champion Dickie Gr uh, Jimmy Grant finishing in third position with $650. Ted Malecki bowled so well throughout the tournament, averaged over 238 for 38 games, picks up a check for $900, going to say a few words. I'd like to thank all you people for coming out here, and I'd like to congratulate uh, Todd Agee for his fine performance. Really you can pick up on what he's saying. He's a real gentleman, a real sportsmanship. Thanking everybody. And, and hold your applause, please. Uh, <laughs> making some jokes with the crowd. He's a true professional, Dick, a true professional. But I would like to personally thank Rick Davis for having such a tremendous tournament down here. And he's given Rick some recognition. Well deserved, Jim. That's for sure. He put on a great tournament, Dickie. We had some good scores here in the 1987 Akron Open. Just a great tournament. In the eight year history of the tournament, we have a repeat champion. That's true, what we've talked about before. He's introducing Todd Agee, the first two time champion. Todd Agee, 21 years of age, won this tournament in 1985. This crowd's going crazy here. 1986, and again in 1987, the champion. I'd like to thank everybody that made the finals and great champion. I'd like to thank everybody that came out here. My favorite tournament. <laughs> he says it's his favorite tournament. If you didn't hear that, he loves his house. He goes well here, and he was picked to win this tournament. Some great, great bowling and some great sportsmanship, wouldn't you?